Good morning. Hi, it's Pastor Heather. We are um, doing Sunday School on Zoom for a few weeks. I know that we had just invited everybody back, but things change and, it, and we needed to um, stay home for a few weeks so everybody can um, be safer and feel better. So uh, we're bringing you Sunday School today recorded on Zoom. So we're doing a lesson on kindness. We started this last week. Last week, we heard a Bible story about some friends who brought their friend to see Jesus. They literally carried their friend uh, to see Jesus, and they dug a hole in the roof of this house and lowered the guy down into this really crowded house so that they could, so that they could see Jesus and Jesus could heal their friend. So today we're going to talk about how to be kind. So we've learned how to be kind to friends, right? Today we're going to learn how to be kind um, to strangers, to people we don't know. Uh, but first, I want to review the memory verse. We have a verse about kindness from the Bible, and we're inviting everyone to learn this and know it. And we have it in a little song um, that uh, Fiona is going to sing for you. I want you to join in. She's going to sing it twice, and then you can join in whenever you're ready, okay? All right, I'll see you in a minute. Hi, everyone. All right, let's sing our, ver or our memory verse. Be ye kind one unto another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Do, do, a doodly do. Ephesians 4.32, bum, bum. Be ye kind one unto another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Do, do, doodly do. Ephesians 4.32, bum, bum. Awesome. Thanks, Fiona. That was great. I love that song. It really gets stuck in your head. So I'm going to share the screen now and show you some pictures uh, that go along with our story. Hang on a second, give me a minute to get ready. There we go. Okay, so this story comes uh, from the book of Genesis. That's the first book in the Bible. And Genesis means beginning. So when God began to do things, when God started to do stuff, this is what happened. And this is a, a story about Abraham and Sarah. It's a very, very old, old story. Um, uh, when they were about 75 years old, that's pretty old for people, isn't it? Abraham and Sarah were 75 years old. God came along and said, pack up all your stuff, gather up all your family and your herds and everything that you own and follow me. And I will take you to a land that I'll give you and it can be yours forever. And um, that's what they did on trust. Believing God, they packed everything up and brought everyone along, and they traveled for a long time. And a lot of things happened, um, but they eventually settled in the land that God gave them. And now settling down isn't, for them, isn't the same as us settling down. When we move, right, we pack up the house in boxes, and we move to like another house or apartment, and we kind of stay there for a while. Well, Abraham and Sarah didn't live in a house they lived in a great big tent like we see in our picture. Um, they had so many flocks of sheep and goats and cattle um, that they had to move around from place to place so that the animals would always have fresh green grass and, and uh, clear water to drink. Um, so like if they ate everything in one little valley, they'd have to be led over the hills to the next little valley uh, in order to survive. So Abraham and Sarah couldn't live in a brick house or a, a, a stone house. He had to have a home that could be easily carried on the backs of camels. So he lived in a tent like this. It was made usually of like animal skins and those would be all sewn together and put on, on poles and held together with rope. It made a very comfortable home, which kept out the wind and the rain. And when Abraham and Sarah had to move on, they would just pack it all up and take it with them. So one day, Abraham made a new camp on a great grassy plain. It was a splendid place to make his home, for there was enough grass 
to last the herds for a long time, and there was plenty of fresh, cool water for them to drink. Abraham and Sarah thought they would like their new tent home very much, but there was one thing that they wanted that would make them even happier. They had no children of their own, and they wanted a son so much. So one day, Abraham was sitting in the shadow of the tent door. It was a very hot day. And he saw, to his surprise, three men coming towards the tent. He got up and ran towards them, bowing himself to the ground. Do not go away, he said, but rest under this tree for a while. I will have water brought to wash your feet and will bring you food so that you may refresh yourselves. The three strangers sat down under the shady tree while Abraham and Sarah hurriedly prepared a meal. When the meal was ready, Abraham served it himself to the strangers under the tree. While they were eating, one of them said to Abraham, where is your wife, Sarah? She is in the tent, replied Abraham. Then the stranger made a wonderful promise to Abraham. God is going to send you and your wife, Sarah, a baby, a baby son, very soon, he said. Sarah was standing behind the tent door curtain and heard all that was said, even though she couldn't be seen by them. When she heard the stranger's promise, she laughed aloud because she did not believe that she could have children anymore because she was so old. Sure enough, a few months later, God sent Abraham and Sarah a baby boy of their very own, just as the stranger had promised. They were so happy. They called the baby Isaac, which means laughter. God has made me laugh with joy, Sarah said, as she kissed her little son, so that all who hear may laugh with me. So Abraham discovered that in being kind to strangers, he had been welcoming the messengers of God to his tent home, and he was very glad. The end. Isn't that a great story? I love that story, how Abraham is so quick to see strangers and welcome them and invite them to stay and have a meal and takes care of them out in the middle of the wilderness. So, what we're thinking about today is how then do we learn to be kind um, to strangers as well? And here's a couple of things we learned from the story that are important to think about. Um, one of the things is that when we are kind to other people, we are honoring and praising God as well, because this is what God wants us to do. God wants us to care for one another. And we learn that sometimes when we make when we're kind, we're making friends out of strangers and sometimes even friends out of enemies. And we learn that when we're kind, we give something of ourselves, our time and our things, just like Abraham and Sarah gave food and water and a place for the strangers. Sometimes when we are kind, we're asked to give something uh, from ourselves as well. So I want you to think about, maybe talk about in your family, uh, how are some good ways that we can be strangers, kind, how we can be strangers, oh, how we can be kind to strangers um, in our world today? Um, so I thought of a couple, and you can maybe add some more to the list. Sometimes just saying hello and smiling and, and being friendly is a kindness to strangers. Sometimes when we give food um, to a, a, a shelter or to a food bank, we're being very kind to strangers, people we may not even meet, but they need uh, resources um, that they don't have. And if we give those, we're being kind to strangers. Sometimes we donate clothes to the thrift store or to a free clothes closet like we have here at Berkeley Hills. And when we do that, it's like giving food. It's being kind to strangers that we may never meet, and yet they greatly appreciate it. And I thought about, um, you know, sometimes it's important. Kindness is like you don't judge other people um, just because of the way they look, like if they look different from you. You don't judge them. Um, so if they're, 
hair looks different from yours or their eyes or their skin. Maybe they move differently from you or have different abilities than you do. Uh, sometimes we, we make fun of people who are different from us. Kindness says, be good to them, make friends with them, uh, care for them, uh, even if they don't look just like you. All right, so that's the end of our story time and our learning. We ask Fiona to come back. She's gonna talk uh, you through making a couple of kindness crafts today that you can do at home, okay? Here's Fiona. All right, so I have two crafts for you. One of them is a Be Kind banner. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take some fun paper or take some plain paper and make it fun yourself. You can cut out shapes like a triangle or a flag or even a heart, and you're gonna make six of those flags. It's gonna look like this. You're gonna take some other fun paper or maybe a marker or some crayons, and you're gonna take your flags and put the letters B, E, for B and K-I-N-D for kind on those little flags. So it says be kind and you're gonna attach those to a string or a ribbon and then you can hang that up somewhere in your house to remind yourself and your family to be kind to others. So that's our first craft. Our second craft is be kind bottles. So you're gonna take a bottle of water a couple of granola bars or snack bars or something and a piece of tape you can well i have little fun ducky uh duct tape you can take whatever kind of tape you have and you're going to take your bottle and your granola bars and you're going to tape the granola bars onto the bottle just like this there you go. See, they're all attached together. You can add a little note that says, be kind, or God loves you, or whatever like kind of little note you want. You don't have to make a note, but you can. And you're going to keep this in your car, or take it on walks with you. And if you see someone that you think could use a bottle of water and a snack, or you think that you should be kind to them, you can give it to them when you're out in the world. And those are our crafts today. All right, thank you, Fiona, that was awesome. So just a real quick um, review of our memory verse, right? Be ye kind, one unto another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God and for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Ephesians 4.32. Practice your kindness, if you haven't done this already, draw us a picture of you being kind, of you doing some sort of kindness for somebody else. Draw a picture and then have mom or dad send it to the church. Uh, you can do that on the email or in an envelope in the mail. We're looking for lots of fun pictures of all of us being kind every week. And I want you to practice a kindness this week. So on a little piece of paper, write down uh, how you are going to be kind this week uh, as a way of practicing kindness. And, you know, I'll give you some hints. With Thanksgiving coming up, part of being kind might be helping mom and dad with Thanksgiving dinner, doing the dishes, cleaning the house, getting ready for a special day with your family. There's lots of kindness chores that can happen with that. Okay. God bless you. I'm going to end with prayer. And thanks for tuning in. Gracious God, we give you thanks for teaching us about the way you want us to be. Uh, we really want to be your loving children. And one way we can do that is by learning how to be kind to one another. We can be kind to friends and family. We can be kind to strangers and people we meet. We can be kind to people we never meet. Teach us to be kind, O oh Lord, that our hearts may be filled with your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thanks, and tune in next week for another Sunday School lesson on kindness. God bless you. Bye.